This short break from civilization is brought to you by the Ford Bronco. Get back out there. The Ford Bronco. Built wild. Learn more at Ford.com slash Bronco. It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. And now... H.G. World presents The Googies, Chapter 12. Where did they take the people on the truck? Well, the facility near Wellsboro. Then west to some place called Wishing Well, I think he said. Monk Castle's crew didn't shoot to kill. They shot to maim, draw blood. Understand me? Slow down the eaters who might be following them. That's why you were burning them. Damn. I didn't burn them alive. I know, I... What was I going to do? Some of them crawled or limped off. Most went into shock. And, well, I'm sure God and me will have little talk about what I've done. But don't you judge me, Peters. Don't you dare. Okay, okay, okay. Easy there. I don't want you taking a tumble down these rocks. Ah. No, I wouldn't want that. Not at all. How far does this keep? Top of the hill here. A quarter mile east. Mind your feet, girl. <laughs> you stumble. You won't stop rolling till you hit those trees down there. The keep's the most visible spot in the resort. Is it safe? Oh, where is safe? And no one is safe. Hey, you okay there, old man? I'm fine. Just a few thousand yards up over the ridge. You kind of dropped your rifle, uh. I got it. Hey, I'm breathing pretty heavy going up this hill. You're not even breaking a sweat. I ran out of sweat a long time ago. And breath, too, it looks like. I am powered by the will of God. He's one of them. One of what? We have to get back to the key. When did you get bit, Miff? I don't remember. It isn't important. We have to keep working. What is going on? He's dead but does not know it. You will come with me, or I'll shoot the both of you. Wait, where's my rifle? Mefflin, man, it's it's okay. We'll follow you up. Lead the way. Are you kidding? He is going to turn any minute. I'm not so sure he hasn't already, Sarge. Just keep back. Just keep an eye downhill and to the right. I'm watching for movement from above and left. They're watching. Hell, they may have spies. I know they are here, but I cannot see them. Did you bring Joe? I told you, I don't know where she is. I feel her, too. She's very close. I see the top of the keep. Think you can make it, Mifflin? Of course. My work isn't done until Joe tells me so. You talked about Reverend Savini's brotherhood. About how he converted scientists into fanatics. The brothers you talked about. Archer, Morrison, Reddick, Butch. They left with Montcastle. No. When you talk about the brotherhood, you're talking about one of two. The ones you're thinking of are not the original brothers. The disciples of Pastor Savini. No, you're thinking of the Reformed Brotherhood. The living followers of Savini drew the line at converting unwilling human beings into whatever the fuck they'd become as part of their warped little ceremony. Once Shepard Gourmand II pulled Morrison, Archer, and those fuckers into play, the Brotherhood became less a, hey, let's all be friends and coexist, and more a, Hey, let's pick which of the survivors we want to breed with and which half we want to eat. 
Hold on. The original Brotherhood was responsible for... You're mistaken, Ken. You're saying the founding fathers of our government... Did what they needed to do to get the fuck out of here before things got really bad. But those murders... Yeah, well... They took some women and children with them. In the process, they torched all the land vehicles left on the grounds. But it didn't matter. The Blob and his friends were still there. At least for the moment. We had no idea how many living, breathing human beings were still trapped in the main building, in their laboratories or, or dungeons, hiding out in the labyrinth beneath the old hotel. What about Mifflin? What was wrong with him? He was dead. He just didn't notice it yet. He kept saying Joe was haunting him. He could feel her around him somewhere in the woods. The problem with Mifflin was that he was wrapped up in the clothes of dead men. Mifflin stripped some of the bodies down to keep warm when the temps dropped. I couldn't tell if he was hurt or if he just took a dirty bloody shirt off someone he tossed in the fire. But he was pale, waxy, and stiff. When he dropped his rifle and kept walking, I knew he wasn't long for this world. In a way, I was kind of happy for the poor guy. I keep a fire going, but I can never get warm. Barbara, open up our packs. Get out our blankets and stop thinking about the fire. What? I was not thinking about... Get warm. You're shaking. Who else has been up here? Mifflin? Eh? Some of the survivors were here until they went away. Wherever they were, uh, going. Hell. Heaven. Wellsboro. No, I mean recently. Those are fresh logs on the fire. You were tracking us for at least a half an hour. It's Joe. She's the only other one I know. Why are you so fixated on her, Miff? You know better than I, Peters. She shared the visions with you. She's waiting for both of us across the lake, on that distant shore. <laughs> what, are, are you two suddenly in Middle Earth? Miff, you know that's not true. The stars swirl above me. They spin up into infinity. That's where the dead have gone and I was to follow. But I am trapped here. Only Joe can set me free. Set my boat across the lake. Wow. Let's get you sitting down, Miff. Don't get near him. Look at his hands. His eyes. What are you talking about? I can't hear so well. That looks like your chair. Over here, by the door. You've had a long day. Take a load off. Yes. I'm so tired. So cold. Sit by the fire, Miff. Don't try to help him. Let him be. I don't like this. You're armed. He's not. Let me talk to him while we can, all right? Montcastle. I met Montcastle. He murdered a man right in front of me. Brother Love. Yes. Good man. But I don't know what his game is here. He told us they cast him out because he refused to recognize Gourmand II as the true voice of the entity. Not the spirit of Pastor Savini, anyway. Too sick. Too violent. He said Gourmand didn't want to coexist anymore. He wanted to join with all humans. Just, but didn't, wait, 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 just wait a minute. What? Oh, my dear. Are you grilling something? It smells so good in here and... Oh, Kenneth. You and your friends should leave. Go soon. We're here to stop Gourmand. <laughs> stop Gourmand? Son, you're too late. The brothers took care of that for you. What do you mean? I thought Moncastle left everyone behind. They've got information we need that might help us stop the infection. Gourmand could be the snake's head. We cut it off and no more reformed brothers. Really? You think Gourmand means anything now? This isn't a snake with a head you chop off. It's a collective. This was a spider that spun a web around the whole preserve. It laid its eggs in us. It bred a new species inside us. Those slow, stupid bastards? Nothing. They're, 
<laughs> not one head, not a thousand, a million. Uh, where's Joe? Ha! Huh. Again! She ain't here, man! I don't like this. I swear I just saw her. You're thinking of the sergeant. No, I saw Geraltia. Geraltia? Upon the face of the lake. We have to go. Let's go outside. Find Joe. Out. Side. Are you hungry? I am starved. I kept some food in that cooler. Not that it needs cooling. Help yourself. Let's go outside first, Miff. I need to ask you about Joe. Come on. Barbie, can you explain to me what I just saw? I mean, he shouldn't be alive. And if he's an eater... He is a phase three necroambulant. Very rare, but it happens. He will regress to phase two shortly. We need warmth and food. Phase three? He said he kept some food in this cooler. Let's see if there's... Oh! I don't think I can take much more of this. What is... Uh, so... That is a phase three. Dead, but doesn't know it. He may not believe he's alive, but in some spiritual state. He remembers being infected, dying, feeling the pain of death, but then he just kept going. He has exceptional hearing and smell. He sees the world just a little differently than we do. We don't know why it is, but he continues to believe he is who he was. Soon, though, the hunger will take him, and he'll become like most of the other eaters. With any luck, Ken will have mercy on him and put a bullet through his head. <laughs> I like the way you think, Barbie doll. Joe, I know you're out there. I know you've been watching me. Show yourself. Please. It's my fault. I know that now. Please help me. They killed him. They took them away in the night. They took the children. All of them. Joe! Hello there, Joe. Hello. You've been here a long while, watching. Of course I have. I am sorry about your grandchild. Why did you go away? Because the ones who killed you took the others. They wanted me to stay. I am so hungry, Joe. I know. I feel the hunger deep inside me, too. I keep it hidden deep inside me as best I can. I am so sorry for what we did to you. This is my hell, Joe. I know that now. I feel my body freezing. I feel the demons trembling in my veins and huddled together in my brain. They are too weak to control me, but they whisper. They whisper thoughts. I am starving, Joe. The whispers never stop. The urge will only grow even as your muscles tighten and snap. You will see through your eyes, though they will swell and burst. You will hear them and the hunger. You will not stop until you are dust. I am so sorry. The things I looked away from, the things I allowed to happen to you, I was so proud when you returned to us. I was happy they called you the Chosen One. I thought maybe they'd stop hurting people, stop the torture and the horrors. I looked away from so many things to protect my boy, and here you are, and there he is at the bottom of a cliff. All but what a him I keep inside my belly. You are the product of a union of souls. I am a monster. I am an accomplice of my own death, of my grandchild's, of yours. I am the chosen one. The brothers unlocked me from my prison. No. They really didn't, Joe. Kenneth, what do you know of this? Don't come near me. Get away from me. Why aren't you saying the same for Joe? You know why. I have no hunger for her. Because she's already infected. Isn't that right, Miff? What you're so sorry for is that she survived the labs. I was cured. Somehow I put the fear into the dead as Dorothea, and even when she sleeps... They dare not stand in my way. You have to go, Peters. Joe, please end this. End me. Not going anywhere. You and me, Joe, we need to talk. 
This midnight monster movie stuff's got to end before... Then stand away from us, Kenneth. Remain quiet. Let me show you my true power. Who would I give for a sparkly vampire right about now? I will send you away, Mifflin. Remember your dreams, the ones we shared on the rooftop? You said I was given a great gift, that I could see the world beyond the gulf of space. I could dream of the still lake and the city standing on its distant shore. Come to me and share that dream again. Come and be with your children, be with your friends. Or where are you, my love? Crossing the lake, inside my boat. I want to look down into the water. No, you must not. Leave behind those things that you cannot change. But you cannot save them. I need to know if my boy is there. He is not. He waits for you on the far shore. Listen. I hear them. I hear them. The boat will not move. Dream of them standing on the distant shore. They are pulling you toward the lamplight on the shore. I see them. I see them all. I will give you this gift. A gift of the ancients, perfected by the Brotherhood, a kiss from the Elder Gods who lived across the Hyades in the ancient and endless land of Caracosa. Starlight, whispers, fading. You will leave your body now. Let the boat carry you. Let the arms of your loved ones fold over you and hold you. You will feel warm again. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thanks. You know, uh, I do have a gun and an axe. I sent him on his journey. There are moments in life when your brain just... You know, breaks. You need to take a moment. Your nurse has been glaring at you for about ten minutes now. Letter! I like it when women stare at me. Yeah, well. Maybe you can give her and me a few minutes of quality time. Yeah, sweet cheeks. Just you, me, and a bag of shit. Try not to confuse me in the bag this time, okay? I'll just go out. Oh, stop. I just told you about crushing a man's skull with a rock and burning a pile of human corpses, and you get tummy trouble over this? Park it, Nancy. <laughs> I can't believe I had to tell you what a cheesesteak was. And the look on your face when I did. Wow. It's uncommon to see people eating meat. Even talking about it is uncomfortable for a lot of people. Before the world turned into a bowl of slop, we had these kids called vegans. No meat. No dairy. Nothing that would rob an animal of its life or even what it produces. <laughs> I have no problem with what somebody wants to put in their bodies, or doesn't, so long as they don't go ministering to me about what I put in mine. Don't eat meat. Don't drink alcohol. Don't smoke. Don't put your thing into other things without a lead dally coat. PETA would have hated life between 2013 and 2020. Nomads have trouble raising crops, especially when high crops hide eaters. Cats, dogs, and horses? Easy to trap. Simple to skin. And fry up. I see what you're saying. You lived in a different time with different ways. Back then, we had a bunch of whiny entitlement babies. Flannel-wearing, collar-popping douchebags and pretty boys. Artists who couldn't lift a shovel unless it was to move around their own bullshit. The useless kind of fuckers that were the first to die inside a Starbucks blogging the end of the world. Today, everybody looks like a goddamn porcelain doll. 
You're all so pale and precious that most days it makes me want to see a paunchy Baltimore hipster again just so I could give him a big hug before I beat the fuck out of him. You're a nice kid, Marky Mark. Most of you are nice, one at a time. But collectively, you're all like sheep. Are you ashamed of us? Ashamed? Nah. I mean, well, maybe. I'm just a little disappointed. Though I don't know why I should be. I shouldn't be. Every war stopped after the dead rose up. There's no population problem. You guys cleaned up the environment pretty nice. Everybody gets a job, a place to live, a place to die. It's like John Lennon's number nine wet dream. Or Canada. Where were we? Joe showed up and crushed Mifflin's skull with a rock. Oh, yeah. Good times. I can't remember what we did with Mifflin after that. My next clear memory is standing at what looked like the entrance to a storm cellar or a bomb shelter, about 10 meters away from the keep. Originally, I just thought it was a transformer box, but Joe opened it up and walked down into darkness. At the foot of the steps, she opened the heavy fire door, and I had to hide my eyes from the flood of light that, I guess, woke me up from my post-Mifflin funk. What the heck is all this? They are survivors. Four of the women are pregnant. Two have newborns. The seventh lost her child to the eaters. I had hoped the woman you brought from the site could have helped them with the injured and the sick. And those three men in the back. Men? Just kids, it looks like. They are trying their best, but they are starving and exhausted. In the room beyond that door are 20 more lost souls. Fever, pneumonia, dysentery. They keep them away from the children and the mothers. The rest of those who made it are out all on the pyre. The attack wiped out all of the food and the supplies. At least they will all have clean well water now. If I'd stayed behind with you, they would certainly all be dead. When I arrived, they were all in hiding in the keep. Mifflin was killing the injured and the infected before dragging them down and stacking them up like cordwood for his fire. You didn't kill him then? First, I didn't know if he was really dead. Then, I needed to see if he was working for Shepherd Gourmand with the brothers. But they were long gone. Mifflin was just a dead man who didn't know it. He had no ties to any of them. He would talk to the bodies as he took them, apologize to the injured as he cut them open and ate from their bellies. As he lit his fire, I led the survivors from the keep into the underground. Mifflin never missed them. Perhaps his mind had gone by then. He'd also forgotten about the underground. Besides, he was burying the dead. He could not tend to the injured. He did not want them to suffer in the cold, dying alone or torn apart by a herd. What happened to the eaters that attacked? They didn't bother with Mifflin. The infected dead reanimated and wandered off. But once they came near me, they wandered off, even kept their distance from me. As you said, it is a war inside me, and I possess some things that could destroy what the Eaters really are, and somehow they fear that. I think perhaps the disease, you say, is keeping me alive is winning. And if what you say is true, perhaps the cure to all of this... But the cure is also fatal. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Not really. No. Trautia is sleeping deep inside me. It seems easier than before to subdue her. That's great. This is how we escaped from resort. Through a series of tunnels and caves under the complex. There is an old hand-cranked lift at the end of this shaft that take you down to the base of the mountain and utility tunnels that run underneath the grounds. They are mostly either free. Mostly. Well, that's encouraging. So, what's your plan? Did you bring a large truck? No. Well, then it is a good thing that I did, is it not? 
I will need help moving this group three miles down the mountain to where my truck is parked. It must be refueled, and we must have medical supplies. Well, I'm fresh out of both. I took the fuel I needed last night, but I need to go into the catacombs under the complex and get the supplies from the laboratory. Then I guess there's no access point on the far side of the mountain from the complex. Of course not. That would be too easy, Kenneth. At least the trail to the truck is downhill. Yeah, well, listen to you, Polly Positive. Thirty civilians, some pregnant or with newborns. A third are sick and barely mobile. Probably contagious. And Manny Moe and Jack there are your only orderlies. Guess we need to talk with Sarge. The next morning, wow, I didn't want to crawl out of the shelter. Dark, cold, warm. Uh, the fire was out, but the air was cool, not freezing. We lay on a bed of wool blankets and under down and cotton comforters salvaged from the resort. The wind whistled through broken glass in the observation deck above us. Sometime in the night, Barbara unwrapped herself and wiggled her way into my arms. For warmth, of course. Sarge moved a little closer, but she had her own kit, and I guess she was used to stopping wherever she dropped. I thought, if I was going to die that day, then the gods gave me an excellent wake-up call. It was a long moment of comfort and peace. My Christmas morning, I guess for all the crap and misery thrown our way. When Barbara stirred, I thought the moment had gone. As soon as she opened her eyes, she'd realize where she was and move. But she didn't. She opened her big brown eyes and looked up at me as comfortable as you please, and even pressed into me a little closer before closing her eyes again. The little smile on her lips it felt like walking downstairs to the smell of fresh coffee. Of course, all things must pass. None of life's dreams can last, as the old man says. Good morning, Ken and Barbie. <laughs> Time to check the perimeter. I'll let the two of you mop up while I walk around with Mr. Peepers. Sarge left her kid open like an empty cocoon threw on her green camel coat and headed for the front door with her 50 caliber work husband. The temperature dropped about 30 degrees inside the keep, and I instinctively drew Barbara closer to me. In doing so, the temperature went up and the two of us were about as close and intimate as any two people could be. She clutched me and the heavy blanket, then noticed something about me that I'd hoped she either didn't notice or uh, uh, mind. Well, did and did, I guess. Before I could say, uh, it, it's a medical condition that afflicts all heterosexual men pressed against women for long periods of time. Well, she was up and getting dressed without a word. Like she found a spider in her sheets. Well, I decided Christmas morning was over. It was time to get to work. Thinking a good, stiff, cold breeze might be good for me, I grabbed my coat and quickly stepped outside. The first thing I saw was Sarge staring south off the mountain overlooking the Mockway Valley. The second thing I saw were dozens of clouds hauling ass across a clear blue sky. The orange and reds of early morning in the Appalachians brought the valley to life. When we got to the top of the mountain, it had been that proverbial dark and stormy night. Now, shadows raced across the landscape, mile-long dragons heading east, slithering through and around the contours of the mountains and over the horizon. No eaters, no ruined city blocks or piles of twisted steel, no dried blood or words of warning painted into cinder block. Just the earth below us continuing its daily routine like none of us ever happened. Wow. Now that's something to write into a memoir, huh? Now, is 
that before or after talking about how you woke up with two gorgeous women the morning of your final battle against the undead? Yeah. If I live to write about this, Sarge, I'll make sure to tell them I did you twice. So long as I'm the one who broke you, say what you want. I'll write how I took both of you within an inch of your lives. Now you begged for that last inch. Fair enough. Think we'll live long enough to lie about today? Oh, I don't know about you, Sunshine, but... Where's Barbie? Inside. I guess we should do something about Mifflin, huh? Why? Is his body in the way of something? No, but the man deserves to be buried or or burned, uh, uh, something. We might want to do something about the eaters first. Where? Down the other side of the mountain. North, northwest. Along the fence at the end of the riding area. I'm guessing a hundred, two. It's hard to tell with them all crowded up like that. Looking right up at us. That fence doesn't look good enough for crowd control. Who knows how long they've been pushing on it. One break, and they'll start spilling through. Once that happens... Yeah, I get you. Get your Sherpa and the Psycho, and let's go do something stupid. Barbara, the place is rotten with eaters around the gates. Any other idea how... Barbara? Where... Oh, great. What? Barbara's gone. Took the laptop. Three of the guns. Oh, well, that solves that. Can't say she's the brightest jewel in the crown. Where'd she go, you think? I'm betting she went ahead without me. Huh. Well, when you find her under a pile of rotters, wait until they're done feeding on her to get the notebook. Don't shoot them off. You might damage it. Always the optimist. Guess we better get ready, huh? I'm ready. From this position, I can cover 75% of the resort grounds. Can't hit anything beyond a quarter of a mile in these conditions. But I can see there's a line of 50 hostels along the fence. I might be able to drop half before they drop below my line of sight. After that, we'll have about 15 minutes before the limber ones get up here. And another 10 before the herd makes it up here. If we wait, it's easier on my ammo. But I don't want to be in the woods with a bunch of runt squirters and lungers. So spend most of your ammo now while you can see them. (laughs) Hmm, that, my friend, is a sexy idea. But I think I'd rather help move the sheeple than agitate the hostiles. So what's the bottom line on Katerina Crazy Pants over there? She's all kinds of messed up. It's not her fault how she is. That Hawkins guy and a bunch of the Brotherhood weirdos in that spooky castle out there did things to her that, well... The whole, like, priestess-goddess thing. Yeah, I got it. Can I trust her not to wig out or turn into Cher or something equally terrifying? Yeah. Her focus is the civilians. I'll take your word for it. It's all I need. (laughs) You headed into the mines of Moria? Yep. All right. Then take this. This doesn't look like a gun. Oh, it isn't. It's a voice data uplink. Plug it into a USB, and it's set up to communicate with the boys back at Slim Shimmer. Any information you find in there, we want it. Okay. And whatever's on her notebook, too. If you got a pride out of her cold, dead cleavage, we want it. I think you are crazy, but the boss wants the info on your face for readers. How can you say that after seeing Mifflin? Do you know how many people I've seen like him? Not dead, but dead. Ever heard the expression, if you can't beat him, join him? I was inside there. I know what I saw. Oh, right. When you were drugged up and repeatedly hit in the head. Oh, and dreaming about a big lake and space. Why are you so hostile? I'm hostile about everything, friend. I thought it was part of my charm. No sense going into the tomb wondering what you're going to find. You're sure? 
I have a pretty good idea. Best case, bodies and things eating bodies. Worst case, a bunch of isolated skeletal test subjects that we don't have a way of moving. Sometimes it's best to scrub the mission and call in the evac. You're trying so hard to be an asshole about this. The plan is this. There are no more seats on the bus out of Spooky Town. You come out alone or with Barbie, no more. Once the first eaters hit the top of the range and everybody's on board, we head out. They are my priority. We will do our best to stick around. But for the supplies and the information. But don't expect me to save you. <laughs> oh, you're adorable. You know that, Sarge? You know you love me. I hate you so much. I want to make you love me just so I can crush your soul. Ha! <laughs> Tell you what. When we get out of there and save the world, you can sleep with me and leave me in the middle of the night and never call. What's happening with the ethers? Nope. Hey, Tutti Fruity's up. Hey, Joe, we got eaters all lined up down the mountain. Okay. My best guess is that the fence will buckle in the next two hours. Are you people ready to move out? We need to get your civilians out and down. I thought Barbara was helping, but I just looked in on the people we have isolated, and she wasn't there. I thought she doubled back, then I missed her tending to one of the pregnant women. Nope. She went inside. I'm going in after her. <laughs> Dumbass. If we don't find the supplies we need, we won't make it very far. I dumped my gear so I can fit as much as I can in here. If I get back and you're gone, I'll just repack what I can and head south until I can reach you by radio again. Be careful, darling man. The world has a shortage of good men. Don't let this place bury one more. Listen to Sarge. She knows what she's doing. So do we. The music swells. Frame wipe to the big chase scene. Come on, Natasha. Let's go find Moose and Squirtle. Episode 12 starred James Baxter as Ken, Brian Lincoln as Mark, and Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard as Joe, featuring Julie Hoverson as Balamani Sarasvatsi, M. Sierra Garcia as Sarge, and Bruce Busby as Mifflin. The episode was written by Jay Smith. Show running and editing by Brian Lincoln. Sound effects, sound design, mixing, and mastering by Michael L. Stokes. Musical direction by Michael L. Stokes, featuring original music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. HG World is a production of 3015 North Studios, under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. For more information, visit www.goodmorningsurvivors.com. There are many things that we can all do that may help stop the spread of the coronavirus. But one thing we can all do is to have a plan in case you do get sick. First, consult with your health care provider for more information about monitoring your health for symptoms suggestive of COVID-19. Second, stay in touch with others by phone or email. You may need to ask for help from friends, family, neighbors, community health workers, or more if you become sick. And finally, determine who can care for you if your caregiver gets sick. 
For more information, go to cdc.gov and be well, everyone.